Welcome to the introduction to VizCore video series. This is video number one, getting started. Here we cover the basics of how to install VizCore and look at your first data set. My name is Art Gleason and I'll be your host for this and the other videos in this series. Note that this series as a whole complements the written documentation, which is also a key reference. So if you're, there are things that are not clear just from watching this, you can also refer to the manual. So first, what is VizCore? VizCore is a software platform developed by Vid Petrovic and Falco Kuster at UC San Diego, which at its most basic level is a, a tool for visualizing and analyzing point cloud data. One of the innovations of VizCore is the efficient way that it handles large data volumes, billions of points at a time. So uh, this enables fluid interactions even with extremely large data sets. And although it's certainly true that you can use VizCore to view something like a LiDAR point cloud, say, um, it's much more than just a 3D viewer and this is readily apparent when it's used to view photogrammetric reconstructions based on data sets of many 2D images. In fact, VizCore was really developed from the start to complement modern structure from motion photogrammetric workflows. In these cases, VizCore leverages photogrammetrically derived products such as the camera pose estimates, uh, the point cloud reconstructions, to provide spatiotemporal context for each original raw image and it allows annotations to be related and transferred across different views of these images, thereby linking the raw 2D images, the 3D point clouds, and other derived 2.5D orthoprojected maps. In this video series, we'll show you how to get started using VizCore as both a visualization and analysis tool for your own data. So uh, before we really get going, some quick comments on system requirements. At the current time, VizCore requires a Windows 10 PC. Hopefully in the future there'll be Linux and Mac versions, but for now Windows is required. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM is the minimum recommended configuration. Of course, more is fine. Um, and a dedicated NVIDIA or AMD graphics card is highly recommended. If you have a machine with integrated graphics only, um, Viscore is likely to run, but the experience will be degraded because Viscore makes heavy use of the GPU acceleration. Um, a multiple monitor setup is also recommended, although not mandatory. If you have only one monitor, then I suggest becoming comfortable with using multiple desktops. To set those up, you click the task view icon in the taskbar, add a second desktop. You can see here I, I have four of them set up. And you can rapidly switch between these desktops with the control windows um, and right left arrow keys. Finally, um, a three or five button mouse is very useful. Most uh, all window users will be familiar with the standard two button mouse, something like, like this one with two buttons and a, and a scroll wheel in between. Uh, but Viscore makes use of a third middle button for certain common functions like panning and placing markers on a model. A simple three button mouse looks something like this. You can see it has here an extra third button right beneath the scroll wheel. Um, this one was only $7 online. Fancier gaming mice also work great, but they cost uh, more like $30 to $60. As long as you're buying one of these, uh, I suggest getting a five button mouse. Five button mice will have additional buttons, usually here along the side where your thumb can hit them. You won't use any of these really right away, but they become useful for some of the more advanced functions down the line, and you may as well only get one new mouse now. One tip that I've found uh, is going with a slightly more expensive brand name mouse is a little bit more convenient because they come with software that enables you to remap the buttons. This is very helpful. The super cheap mice tend to not have this and uh, that means you may need to install some third-party utility to make uh, the buttons work if you have any troubles. Um, Logitech and Microsoft specifically are brands with great software support for mice. And in my experience, it's been worth it to spend a little bit more on one of these uh, in order to have a smooth software experience. But you can make either approach work just fine. Um, if you're just getting started and you want a test run, then you could stick with your standard two-button mouse, especially if the scroll wheel can click like this. Um, that's an okay way to get started and test drive it and... Uh, and, and get going with this core, but if you become a frequent user and you become annoyed by the rolling scroll, scroll wheel while you click, then you can always upgrade your mouse later. 
This score will come as two zipped files, one of them containing the software itself and the other one containing a small test data set that can be used to learn how the software works and just at least to verify that it's installed correctly. So the first step in installation is to unzip the folder containing the software. Here it's called viscore.zip. So um, we can uncompress this. Okay, once, once that is unzipped, you have a, a folder called viscore, which contains the uh, install files. Inside viscore, the first thing we need to do is find two libraries from Microsoft that are uh, dependencies that need to be installed. So inside viscore, inside vid, setup, there are two .exe files here, vc redist 2015.x684 and vc redist 2010.x686. If you just click on these, you'll have a license agreement, and if you click install, they'll install to your computer. In my case, I've already done this, so I get an error that that it's not needed to run. But you should you need to install both of these um, as dependencies for Viscore before it will work. Once that once that is complete, you can go back up to the top level uh, Viscore folder. And there's a script here called deploy to C. When you double click this, a bunch of messages will scroll up in the in the console window, and at the end you'll get a message press any key to continue. The console window will, will disappear, and now if you look in this in your C drive, uh, you in top level C, you'll have a folder called vid, and inside vid will be the installed Viscore software. The executable itself is in vid vcgo. It's called vc5.exe. The last thing, oh, then you're going to want to unzip the, um, the demo, demonstration data set to make sure that this all works. So you can unzip Coral Test. This can go anywhere. Uh, the actual Viscore software is, is designed to go right under the C drive, but the demo data set or any of the data sets that you're planning to use with this software can go anywhere. Here I'm just going to leave it on this on my D drive here um, where the zip file was. So you get a, a folder called Coral Test. If you look in Coral Test, you see there's a bunch of files here, and we will go over the meaning of all these files, um, what they're what they contain in later lessons. But right now, for the moment, the important one is the one called CoralTest.VML. That's sort of the main, um, the main file that you'll that Viscore will use to understand the structure of the rest of the data set. And the last thing we need to do to set up is tell Windows what, in order tell Windows to use Viscore to open .VML files. So we can right click on this. We can do Open with, choose another app and you want to find vc5.exe and always use this app to open VML files. If it doesn't appear um, here for you, you can, you can search for it. And like I said, it's under C, vid, vc, go, vc5.exe. Always use this app to open .vml files. Once you do that, um, the Coral Test <coughs> data set should open up and it should look something like this. Uh, the first thing you're going to know is how to get out of Viscore. You can click Escape to exit. And if you've done all these steps properly, you should see a star as the icon for .vml files. If you made it this far, then congratulations, you've successfully installed Viscore. But there's one final setup item that you should check before diving in and really starting to use the program. And that is to make sure that the GPU or graphics processing unit is set correctly. As I mentioned earlier, Viscore makes a heavy use of the GPU, and if you have more than one of these installed in your system, then you want to make sure you select the highest performing one in general. Um, how can you tell? Well, first, it's good to know 
<clears throat> what you have installed in, in your computer. And a good way to check this, if you don't know, is with the Windows Task Manager. So you can get that with the Windows key and just start typing task. You get the Task Manager. And on the Performance tab, you can see uh, the GPU units that are reported. And you can see on my computer, I have two. The GPU 0 here is the Intel integrated graphics that comes on the motherboard. GPU 1 is an add-on NVIDIA Quadro card. If you only have one GPU here, then really you can skip this whole step because it won't matter. This is only important if you have two. And in this case, I want to make sure that Viscor is using this NVIDIA card, which is a higher performance um, of the higher performance of the two cards. So how can you tell what Viscor uses? Well, the first thing is when Viscor starts on the splash screen, it will report. I'll, start, I'll open up the Coral Test uh, data set here, and the first thing that it will do before it shows you the data is it will splash up on the screen and report some of the things, and one of those is, is what GPU is being used. So here it goes. You can see here that that message goes by very quickly. So if you're quick enough to catch it, you could see which card was being used. But if you miss that, you can go into the configuration menu, which you get by clicking the space bar. And you'll see here that there are a few menu items right here in the center of the screen in white text. You use the arrow keys to navigate through the configuration menu here. And in this case, we want to use the down arrow to go to about, the right arrow to go in, and then the down arrow to go down to this system item, the system menu item here. And you can see here, it tells you how much RAM is in the machine and the video card that's being used and also the version of the drivers for that video card, which is helpful. Um, as an aside, if you experience problems with the graphics at all, it's worth checking that your, that your drivers are up to date. Um, so you can use this number here and then go check the company's website to see if you have the most recent drivers. In any case, you can see here that I am, in fact, using the, the Quadro card, which is what I want. Um, and you, you can verify that with the configuration menu. You can use the left arrow to back out of this and the space bar again to exit. Now, if in, in, in this case, I've got the correct card selected. But if I didn't have the correct card selected, if, if what was reported there was the Intel embedded graphics, there are several ways that you can go about correcting this. Um, the first thing is to exit out of Viscor, again, with the escape key. And probably the simplest thing you can do is go to navigate to C, vid, VC, go, find the Viscor executable, vc5.exe, right click on that, and then go to a menu item called run with graphics processor. And then you can pick here uh, which one you want to use or change the default. Um, in, in my case, uh, it's already selected as high performance, so, so that's good. Um, a second way that you can do this is you can bring up a, a settings menu. So Windows key, type graphics, settings, go into here. And then you can pick if uh, you can pick the Viscor executable, select options, and make sure you have high performance selected. Okay, so that's another way to do it. Yet a third way to do it, at least with NVIDIA card, NVIDIA graphics cards, is to use the NVIDIA menu, so the, the system tray menu. So you go down here, open the NVIDIA uh, card configuration menu. Under here, you can specify that I would like to use the following 3D settings for a particular program. You would add Viscor VC5.exe, and then in here you can select which graphics card you want to use. So those are three ways to do it. There are probably are other ways you can do it, um, but those are three good ways to, to try to make sure that you uh, have the correct card selected. And I would what I would recommend is at, between each one, start up Viscor and check that configuration menu and see which 
uh, card is being used. And once it's set, it tends to stay set and, and not change. Um, so you should be good to go once you have it set the first time. After all this hard work of downloading and installing and configuring Viscore, I'm sure everybody's eager to start using it and playing with it and looking at some data. So let's take a look at our, our Coral test data set. And I'll just go over a couple of the very most basic operations. We'll have lots of time to get into the details of, of more exciting things later on. But for the moment, just rotating and, and zooming on the model is a great way to get started. You can actually see, by, by the way, up here in the upper left corner of the screen, I have a little box that will show you what buttons I'm clicking uh, so that it, in case you get lost as I'm going. I'm starting here with the left mouse button and clicking and dragging the left mouse button rotates the view around the center point of the screen and lets you see different angles uh, of, your, of your point cloud. So you can see here the model is constantly rotating or your view is constantly rotating around a point in the center of the screen as here as I click and drag the left mouse button. Now I can move and recenter the model by double clicking the left mouse button. So if I pick a point here in the corner, you can see that moves to the center of the screen and now this new point here becomes the uh, center of or the, the point around which my view will rotate. So you'll find that that this sort of double clicking and rotating action is a very common way to move around and it's a little a uh, bit different from some of the other uh, software 3D viewing software out there, but it's, it becomes sort of second nature after you use Viscore for a little while. The other thing that's a very basic um, mouse motion that you need to know is how to zoom. And you can do that by clicking and holding the right mouse button. You can zoom in and out and um, you know, change the magnification of your, of your view this way. And of course, you can mix and match these operations however you like. OK, these are just the most basic uh, ways to interact with the software. And we will have lots of time to get into more details later. But I think you know, at this point, it's worth uh, at least giving, giving you an opportunity to enjoy playing with your very first Viscor mod. OK, so in closing, um, I'd like to just share a few acknowledgments. Viscor was developed at UC San Diego. Please cite this paper by Petrovic and, uh, and others if you use it. And support for this video series was provided by NOAA's National Oceanographic Partnership Program and the Pew Fellows Program in Marine Conservation at the Pew Charitable Trust. Hopefully this video gave you a bit of flavor for what Viscor is and how you can get started. Um, look for more videos in this series to learn how to load and analyze your own data. And for now, thanks for watching.